What's going on guys? No, I'm just kidding. Um, I just wanted to tell you before the video starts that I'm gonna be putting every single image I've made on the screen. And in the top left you're gonna see the year I've made the image in. And on the top right you're gonna see every single program I've used over the years. And also I'm gonna divide the whole video into a few segments because otherwise it's gonna be hard to compress like four years into one single video. So uh, yeah, hope you enjoy. Let's get started. So, I'd like to talk a little bit about myself first. I'm Stan Orlans, I'm 22 years old and I'm from Belgium. I'm an engineering student currently in my fourth year and my favorite hobby is 3D design. So, the reason why I started it all was because I used to game with some friends and we wanted to make a YouTube channel like every 13, 14 year old does. So what do you need for a YouTube channel? An intro, a logo and a cool banner. So I watched some videos on how to work with After Effects and I taught myself to make these, these basic intros you saw everywhere and after a while I learned some Photoshop too and played around with that for a while. But when I turned 18 I realized that I wasn't really going anywhere with this design stuff and wanted to try something different. And I had used a program called Cinema 4D before but I really didn't really know what I was doing with it. So. I challenged myself to make an image with it every single day just to push myself to learn more and I also made an Instagram account back then and decided to upload all my stuff on there and the first day I uploaded an image without any followers I woke up the next day with like 20 likes on my image which was really cool for me back then and the hashtags on Instagram were still doing great too and I was surprised to see engagement so because of that I decided to continue and I haven't had any regrets since. After a few days I quickly realized that I wasn't the only one doing this at all and I found a whole community doing daily renders and I found so many great people and the idols that I still look up to this day are the people I found in the, in, at the start and um, this motivated me even more honestly to continue and even though I didn't have a lot of time because I was still in my last year of high school I managed to make 209 images in the last 10 months of 2016 and also at the end of 2016 I discovered a program called Octane and normally in Cinema 4D when you want to make a render you can't really see the final result because you only have a viewport with your models inside and your colors and stuff but the way the light is gonna affect the model you have no idea actually so almost every time you have to wait like 10-15 minutes to see what it's gonna look like before you can change anything so with Octane this problem is solved because you can see your, see your scene in real time it's not perfect but still way faster to adjust stuff and work on details so I was really happy, happy I, I purchased this software and also I learned about a program called Das3D it's a program used for characters and it gives you a few basic models of humans to work with and as you're gonna, as you're gonna see in the upcoming images I'm gonna be using that a lot going forward. So, what now? Um, after one year of making abstract art, I really started losing interest in 3D since most of the stuff I was doing was the same over and over again, even if it looked different. I used to work two to three hours on each image, but that was about it. So moving into 2017, I wanted to spend some more time on my art and learn some new techniques. So at the start of 2017, a few people were using a program called Fusion 360. It's from Autodesk and it's a piece of software used by engineers and product designers to make accurate models for production. But somehow some people from the design community found a way to make it work with Cinema 4D and Octane. So the way you model in Fusion 360 is way faster than doing it in Cinema 4D because the hard surface techniques were way way faster and turns out I still use it as my main modeling software to this day if the models don't have to be too organic but that's not really my style anyways. 
A few months later, I got invited by Autodesk to join their student ambassador program for Fusion 360. And of course I said yes, and I got to compete in some private contests and won a few. So this way I could actually save up some money, so I didn't have to do these annoying summer jobs anymore. And overall in 2017, I focused on working with human characters and high contrast neon type images, as you're gonna see in the next few minutes. I also made some time lapses on YouTube and did a few bigger projects along the way. And as you see, the amount of images per year goes down really quickly because I really wanted to make them better and better each time. And in 2018, everything went a bit slower since university was pretty heavy on me. I still did some bigger projects that I'm still pretty happy with. And one of these projects led to my first big client job. And before I did a few album covers and some small stuff, but nothing special. And this time I actually got the opportunity to work on a big music video. And I had to design some spaceships. So looking back on that, this was probably the best moment of 2018 for me. Because I also learned some new techniques I had never used on that job. And getting a lot of views on a video was really fun as well. In 2019 started off really slow for me, I struggled with creative block constantly and I had no idea what I wanted to make and I didn't even know if I wanted to continue. And a big part that I hadn't realized before was that you have to make a choice at some point and I found myself spending hours and hours on ArtStation looking at other people's work and if you, even, you haven't checked ArtStation you should because the amount of talent on there is insane but I started comparing my work to those projects and I just really got down. I wasn't getting much support on Instagram either and things weren't going too well in general. So the thing with ArtStation is that most of the projects you see are more professional and have uses for games or movies. But you have to realize that the good people on there don't finish a lot of projects in one year. And that's not what I wanted to do, I wanted to make more than two projects in a year. And also making 3D art for games and movies is really technical and I didn't really want to learn everything I could already do just in another program, just so I could fit in the industry standard. So in June 2019 something just clicked in my head because I really forgot why I started all this. My plan, honestly, was to make things that I thought looked cool and beautiful and I didn't really want to focus on the technical side too much and I struggled back onto another portfolio side called Behance where I initially found my inspiration. And then I realized that our station and Behance are actually totally different and I wanted to choose one of those and I'd rather focus on creating quote unquote art instead of assets for games or movies. So. I started working on a project called Pastel Dreams and I'm gonna talk a little bit about that project. Whenever the images from this project start showing up on the screen I'll put a little tag on it so you know it's this one and I went back to the basics and decided to create some simple architecture with pastel colors and the first image got great feedback on Instagram and I immediately felt a creative boost. I made a total of 9 images for that project and some of them were my favorite pieces I had ever made so I decided to upload it on Behance and it got featured on their website and they also shared it on Adobe and Behance on Instagram and it felt really good and it even got more likes on my portfolio than it ever had gotten on Instagram before and Adobe even bought one of these images and showed them at uh, the screens at Adobe Max so that was really really cool and I felt way more confident going forward now. It got me a few cool jobs as well and at the start of 2020 I started on another project called Solitude about little houses in the middle of nowhere and I just finished that project a few weeks ago at the time of uploading this video and the feedback on Instagram has been great too. Adobe already shared it on Instagram and I hope it will perform well on my portfolio too. Was it worth it? I always tried to look at the person I was when I started and when I would show all of this stuff to myself as an 18 year old I would never believe I could do any of this. 
so I'm pretty sure that's already a win for me. I must admit that it hasn't always been a great time, but looking back at the progress I've made over the years, I'm really happy to be honest. The thing I've noticed is that you constantly learn to see more and more of the skill it takes to make something. At the start you aren't really aware about all the great talent around you, but quickly you start noticing that stuff other people are doing is actually way more advanced than you could ever imagine. But this also means that you will get better at critiquing your own art, and you start paying more attention to the detail from someone else. It does mean from time to time you get overwhelmed, and in the end it's just you making progress. At last, I really want to recommend finding a creative hobby to everyone watching. It doesn't matter if it's making music, painting, digital art or just writing. Just find something you can work on almost every day, even if it's only 5 minutes and I promise you, you won't regret anything and before you know, you'll be making stuff you thought was never possible. I also hope you enjoyed watching my progress until now. I have no plans of quitting soon, so check out my Instagram if you want to be up to date with my day to day progress. I'm also planning on making a few more YouTube videos since I'd like to have some fun with that too and thanks for watching and see you guys in the next one.